Are you prepared for a paracut? Oh, no! Oh, good, the lights are back on. Phew! It's now looking as if Europe's biggest paracut, and a few of you have criticised Chris Leto and myself, calling it the EU's biggest paracut. Actually, it was. Geographically, and the number of people affected makes it significantly important in the size of Europe. The whole of the Iberian Peninsula, millions of people. So today, there's new information emerging about what might have really happened. Let's go there. Well, it's looking a bit suspicious to me. 70% of Spain's power production comes from renewables. Excellent. Well done, Spain. The southwest of Spain is covered with DC solar farms. Now, solar produces electricity in direct current, and their grid is AC. So all of the PV, the photovoltaic in Spain, has to go through an inverter. Okay, to change it into AC. Imagine if those converters were compromised, or maybe just faulty. Let's look at some facts. Last Monday in Spain at 12.32, there was a massive instability from the inverters that were providing 70% of the grid's input. The frequency of the AC coming out of these inverters deviated, and the grid went, ooh, hiccup, but compensated. But what happened next is the suspicious thing. Five minutes later, a second deviation that overwhelmed the grid was induced by accident or deliberately. And this time the grid protected itself and started shutting down hundreds of substations all over Spain and the big interconnect to Portugal. Oof. Total grid shutdown. In fact, Spain did really well to get the whole system up and running again within six hours. Well done, Spain. But what caused the switch off? Right, class, a quiz question. I'm actually a dictator from a foreign country, and I want to spy on your country. I want you to come up with a way that I can listen and see and glean data from your country. Build me a system where I can eavesdrop on everything for economic and defense purposes on a foreign country. Dun, 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 dun. Jeff, yes, go ahead. Right. Let's make consumer products and commercial products have a back door that we can control. And yes, that foreign country will buy them from us, but secretly we'll be able to control them and eavesdrop on what they're saying, typing and seeing. Oh, that's a great idea, Jeff. Let's implement it. In fact, as the dictator, I'll set a law that every electronic company in our country, by law, has to have a backdoor way of eavesdropping. And those useful idiots abroad will pay for hearing aids with microphones, phones with cameras, keyboards with data recording, and even plug in their phones into our electric cars. Well, actually, that's not a made-up scenario. This week, a UK defence contractor has restricted its top-end people from connecting their phone into an electric vehicle. And in fact, in Britain, certain establishments won't allow a Chinese-made electric EV on site. Why? Well, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a really telling move by China, because if we take a step back and we look at understanding why China and why electric vehicles. Mm. China in particular, in 2017, introduced something called the National Intelligence Law. Right. And that requires any organizations or citizens in China uh, verbatim to support, assist, and cooperate with state intelligence work. And even more worryingly, large firms operating in China must have a board position open to a member of the Chinese Communist Party to right. ensure that those companies are run in accordance with with with, 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 mm. with state policy. So China is a is a legitimate threat, and we're certainly moving towards a world where privacy is a new battleground. And that that brings us on to the point around why electric vehicles. How many times do you now get into your car and it automatically picks up? Your, your music from yeah. whichever app you use. How, how often does it read all your contacts? Um, even actually emails, you can actually go into cars these days and they mm. have uh, your emails on the screen. Now, 
that essentially means that our cars are becoming computers on wheels. Yeah. And the more you can you attach your phone, and the phone, as we all know in this day and age, is is is, is an outsource of where you keep all your information. Yeah. By connecting your phone to Chinese vehicles, when they program all this software, they could be creating what's called back channels to send data back to China. Yeah. And hence the concerns that the defense companies in particular have raised. And do you think that there's some of these companies then are looking for that sort of material? Because, I mean, presumably data is data. They will always make money from that in some way, shape or form. But in terms of sensitive stuff, sensitive information, well, do you think there are people in China sort of combing whatever it is they, they've got coming in to see what's there. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's no doubt about that. There's an old saying that someone shared with me uh, many years ago, and they said in the intelligence game, um, if Russia wanted to gather intelligence, let's say, for example, um, let's say, for example, that imagine all your intelligence are grains of sand on a beach, mm. and, there's, and there's intelligence everywhere around you. A nation like Russia would send in a submarine and send sailors ashore and grab some of that sand, whereas China would just send a plane full of tourists and tell them to collect the sand for them. Right. So what that does is that, that gives mass harvesting. Mm. And what and, it, and it's very much a Chinese approach. And what they can do by collecting everyone's data, not just for targeted people such as executives and politicians right. and, and journalists like yourself, etc., they can understand patterns of life and they can calculate people's movements mm doing it on a mass scale so they will know the movements of people and they will know how to or when and the best time to send a cyber attack for example for the most impact because yeah. they'll understand where people are moving to where they're moving from they'll right. understand who their connections are they can build networks etc so there is a legitimate threat that they're looking at targeted people and people in defense companies and businesses like ba systems and rolls royce warning staff shows you how serious they are taking this threat but also that there's a threat to us all as well on an individual level too mm. like Welcome to the club of being a useful idiot. We all enjoy our consumer gadgets, but how many of them are actually compromised? <laughs> Maybe it's time we all had a hand crank radio. The truth is out there.